today. The title is the Kedusha Samikdosh Bizman Hazeh, the sanctity of the Mikdosh nowadays after the Churban of the Beis Hamikdosh. But um, just to make it more exciting and um, more practical, we're going to discuss a specific question, a specific halachic question, which will um, let us get into the topic of what is the status of the Beis Hamikdosh today. And the real question is, can we go up to the Harabayas nowadays? That is the halacha question, and it's a real halacha question. Is one allowed to go up to the Temple Mount, Tafshin Ayin Ches? So let's begin with the sources as early back as the original um, prohibition for somebody who was impure to go to the Mokim Hamikdosh. So this pasuk is from Parshas Nosoi. It's the first um, a quote in your handout. It says in the pasuk, Hashem commands Moshe Tzavis ben Yisrael command the Yidden Vishalchu ben Amachan that they should send away from the camp. Kol Tzorua, anybody who is a Mitzayra. The Chol Zov, another form of Tuva of Tuma. As a zov, which includes in it zov, a male, zova, a nido, a yeledes, a lady who gives birth. It's another category. The choil Send out of the camp all these three types of impurities. So we have tzoras, zov, which again means zov, zova, nido, yeledes, any impurity which comes from the body itself. The choil tomil anybody who is impure through touching a dead body. Send them out of the camp. It's not only exclusive for males, Mizochor, Adnekeva, Teshalechu, El Michut, Lamachan, and Teshalchum, send them out of the camp. Veloyitamuas Machanehem, they should not make their camp impure. Asher Ani Shaychen Besoychem, because I reside, I rest within them. So if you read the Pasuk, the Psukim, face value, it seems like all of these three types of Tumas, Metzoira, Zov, and Tmei Mes, are all. Ex- uh, expelled out of the same machana. And the Gemara in Tzachim, which is your next um, quote, the Gemara actually says that that's inaccurate. So the Gemara says like this, Tanya, the Gemara presents a b'raisa. It says in the Pasuk with regards to a Metzayra, Bodod Yeshev, a Metzayra needs to uh, sit alone, Levadoi, Yeshev, he needs to sit by himself. Shaloi Yehu Tmei no other type of, uh, uh, of impure person, Yeshvim Eloi, sit with him. He has to be excluded in, in, uh, in, uh, all by himself. So, Yachal, you would think, Yehuzavim Utmei Mesim, also the next type of impurity, which is a Zav or a Tmei Mes, Mishtalchim Lamachana Achaz, they all are expelled to the same camp. They can't sit together, but they all are expelled out of all the camps, or they're, they're all expelled to the same camp. Talmud Loimar comes the verse and tells us, comes the Torah and tells us in the second verse that we read earlier, V'lo yitamu es machanehem, plural. That each of these three impurities have different halachas. So there's one halacha for a metzayda, there's another halacha for a zav, there's another halacha for a tmei mes. Litein machanelose u machanelose. Each of them have their own camp. That's opinion number one. The second opinion says the exact same thing, but he learns it out of a different pasuk. Divi Rabbi Yehuda, these are the words of Rabbi Yehuda. Rabbi Shimon and Rabbi Shimon says, I don't need the word machanehem to teach it to me. Harehu Oimer, it says in the pasuk, Vishalchum in Amachana, they should send out of the camp, Kolt Sorua, the Cholzo, the Cholt Nefesh. Three types of impurities. Yoimar Tmeimes. Let the Torah just tell us that a Tmei Mes needs to be sent out of all the camps. The Al Yoimar Tmei Zov. And it does no need to tell me about a Zov. Because a Zov is actually stricter than a Tmei Mes. In, in, uh, as far as the halachas of Tuma are concerned, a, a Zov has more, does more damage than what a Tmei Mes can do. So in the sense of the severity of the Tuma, Zov is much worse. So the Torah just needs to tell us to make mess, and I would learn Zov and Mitzayro, who's even stricter. I will 
learn by deduction if Tmei Mes go, go out of the camp, Zovim like also came. So Lama Nemar Zov, why does the Torah tell us specifically a Mitzayda, specifically a Zov, specifically a Tmei Mes? Retain Loi Machen Ashniyo to give the Zov a separate halacha. And likewise, to give the Mitzayda its own halacha. So what we learned right now so far that there are three types of impurities, and each of these impurities have different halachas of where they are sent out of. So, let's now go to the third um, quote. This is from the Rambam Hilchas Beis Abichiro, Perek Zayin, Halacha Yud Aleph. Before I get, because the goal of this year is to discuss Beis Abichiro, the Beis Amikdash, and to specifically discuss the Beis Amikdash the way it is now, what we need to do is to apply, the first and foremost, to, to apply the way things were in the times of the Midbar, and apply them to the way things are in the in Yerushalayim and the Beis HaMikdash. So I want to learn with you a halacha, the halacha Beis HaBchira. Now I'm going to say like this. Midbar. There were three camps in the Midbar. The first one was Machane Yisro, where the Yidin, where the Jews encamped. Who are the Machane Yisro, the four Machane the four camps that were told about in Parshos Bamidbar. And then we have Machane Levia, that's where Moshe and the Levian uh, stayed camped. Shenem Arvo, like it says about that camp, they should rest, they should camp around the Mishkon. And then you have the most inner camp, which is Machane Shechino, and that was Mipesach Hatzad Oyelamei Velefnim, the courtyard of the Mishkon. Three camps in the Midbar. Who connect on the Deiris, parallel these three camps to the way it is now in the in Yerushalayim in the future? Said that I'm like this: Mipesach Yerushalayim ad Harabayis. From the city of Yerushalayim, we're talking about the original city of Yerushalayim, the, the city of Yerushalayim that was sanctified as Yerushalayim until the Harabayis, until the Temple Mount. That would be equivalent to Machan Yisrael as a Machan Yisrael in the camp. Mipesach Harabayis, from the entrance of the Harabayis until the entrance of the Azorah, which was the actual area where the, where, the, uh, where the Mizbeach was, and where the Kier was, and where the Heichol was, that would be considered like Machane Levia. Shuhushar Nikonik Machane Levia, that's where the, the, the Nikonor gates, that would be considered the equivalent to Machane Levia. And then going inside the Azor of Lifnim, that will be Machen Eshchino, that will be equivalent to Machen Eshchino. Um, then the Adam adds a sentence um, which we'll understand later better. The Hachel, which I'll soon show you what that is, was another area in the Beis Hamikdash outside of the building of the structure of the Beis Hamikdash. There was a there was a little gate or there was an elevated area. And the Ezra's Noshim, I'll show you what that is in a moment. Mayla Yaseda Babi Salam, they have an additional sanctity. So there are three general groups, Yerushalayim until the Harabayas, Harabayas until the Azoro, and then the and then the Azorah. Three general groups. And each of them are parallel to Machana Yisrael, Machana Levia, Machana Shino. Then the Ram says that there are two additional halachas about the Chael and the Ezra's Noshim. So now we know at least the um, how now, once we know the halachas of the way things are in the Midbar, we'll be able to, to apply them to the way it is in the Beis, in, the, in Yerushalayim and the Beis HaMikdash. So let's learn now another piece of the Nambam from Hilchas Bias Mikdash, the halachas of going into the holy areas. Pere Gimel Halacha Aleph. Says the Nambam, Mitzvah Saseh L'Shaleach Kol Atmeim, it's a mitzvah say to send out all the Impure people, min hamikdash from the mikdash and emar v'yishalzu min hamachin akozuruah v'chazov v'chel tamer lenefesh. We quoted that pasuk earlier. Said that I'm, a lot of things are redundant now that you know the background. Ze hamachin ha'omur kan the machane which the pasuk is talking about over here who machane shchino. So the pasuk is talking about machane shchino. Shuhu like we just learned earlier mi pesach ezes yisrael v'lefnim the most inner part the azora itself. Shemeyani, I would think Shahametsayra, the Hazov, Utmeimes, Shloshtom and Malkam Echad, all these three have to go out of that one camp, the camp of Machaneshino. Tamulema bin Metsayra comes along the trade and teaches us that a Metsayra 
Bodod Yeshu Michus Lamachan Mishavay. A Mitzayir has to go completely out of all three camps. In the Midbar, he would have to be outside of Machan Yisrael. Equivalent nowadays would be a Mitzayir cannot be in Yerushalayim. Ze Machan Yisrael. Suhumi Pesach Yerushalayim. The Lifnim, a Mitzayir cannot be found in the entire Yerushalayim proper. Um, let's just skip a little bit. To the end of the halacha, a line and a half before the end of the halacha. Lefichach, therefore, mishalchin es al mitzayda chutz shemachinus. We send out the mitzayda out of the three camps. Shehu chutz lider shalayim. Halacha gimel. Then we have the next category. U mishalchin zovin zoves nidus veyildus. We send out the next category in the Torah. Zovin zoves nidus veyildus outside of two machinus. Chutz lishte machinus. Shehu chutz laharabayis outside of the harabayis and obviously outside of the azorah. So anybody who is a Zov, Zova, Nida, Ayeledes may be found in Yerushalayim, but cannot be in the Harabayas. Let's go to Halacha Dalit. Tmei Mes, says the Rambam, Afilu Hames Atzma, even the actual body, who is the Aviyah Vaisatuma, Mutarli Hikonis the Harabayas, may be found in the Harabayas. Like we know, Moshe Rabbeinu carried around the bones of Yosef, so the bones of Yosef were next to Moshe. Moshe lived in Machin and Levia. Machin and Levia is equivalent to the Har Habayis, and therefore even the actual dead body may be found in the Har Habayis. Then we have a Lacha Hei and Vav, if you remember that Adam also mentioned about the Chel and the Ezas Noshim. So before we go into the Halachas of that, let's just see the picture you have over here. It's not, it's not the best picture that I was able to find. I mean, it, it's the best picture that I can find, but I'm sure there are better pictures. Um, so, again, it's not accurate over here as far as the measurements, but the outside wall over here, that would be the wall surrounding the Har Habayis. Okay? So, a dead body, likewise, somebody who's a Tmei Mess, is allowed to be found on the Har Habayis. Azov, Zov, Onida, Yeledes cannot be found inside these walls. has to be outside. Right over here, before the structure of the, mik- of the mikdash, you see this little gate or a little elevated area. That's called the chel. And from that area that Amram is about to tell us, Goyim were not allowed to pass that point. There was an actual signs. Recently they discovered signs where they have like in, 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 the, in Arabic or whatever it was, telling Goyim they not, that they can't pass by, they can't pass this area. And also Tmei Mess also were restricted from that. Although we said that Tmei Mess is technically allowed to be in the entire Machina Levia, which Machina Levia ends at this wall over here, which is a Shire Nikon, right before the larger structure. That was where the Mizbeach was found. So technically, Midoraisa, uh, biblically, uh, Mes can go into this chamber over here, but there was a little restriction, the Chachamim put a restriction on um, Tmei Mes should not go past the Chayel, and there was a sign as well written, if you're a Tmei Mes, do not pass this area. And also, Vayalinidos um, also didn't go. Somebody who went to the mikveh, even though the night didn't fall yet, it, it, it wasn't nightfall yet, he's allowed to go into that area. Then we have Ezra's Hanashim, which is this chamber over here. That was even a Tvul Yoim did not go into that area. Okay. So if we were to stop the Shia right over here and have the assumption that the Beis Amigdash today is in the exact same sanctity as it was. Then we have our halachas. We know we are all tmeimes because we didn't have a pora aduma which, um, which, which, which can purify us. So none of us are, all of us are allowed to be in Yerushalayim, and all of us, as far as the tmeimes is concerned, we can actually go to the Temple Mount. So therefore, there's no problem as far as tmeimes is concerned to go on the Temple Mount. None. There is, however, the issue of a zov or a balkeri. Which also has, which is also in the category of this of, of this kind of tumor, a nido, a yeledes. So somebody who has not purified himself from that type of tumor may not go up on the harabayas. So if somebody didn't go to the mikvah properly and didn't actually make sure there's no chatzitis and didn't make sure he's hundred percent sure that if he's a zov, let's say he has to wait seven days and make sure there's no impurity coming out of his body, as the halachas of a zov is, or a zov, or a nido, or a yeledes. They cannot go to the Harabayas. So anybody nowadays who hasn't taken care of that level of Tuma to make sure he goes to Mikvah and wait seven days cannot go to the Harabayas. Anybody who does has to make sure he's going to the Mikvah. So if we stop the Shia here, that will be the Halacha. But now let's 
analyze is the base Amikdosh, does does the base Amikdosh have the sanctity of the way it had of the way it was in the times of the base Amikdosh when it was standing. So to understand this, we need to under, we need to go back to a Mishnah. A Mishnah in Shavuos. It's the first Mishnah in the second chapter of Shavuos in the Gemara that's found in the Yud Dalad Ahmed Allah. The Gemara there, the Mishnah is discussing there about those who are impure. They're not allowed to go into Beis Hamikdash, into the holy places. And the Mishnah said the following statement. This is a quote Vav, the sixth quote over here. Right after the picture. Echad anichnas la Azorah. Anybody who goes into the Azorah. Or, Echad, anybody hanichnas la Toisefes la Azorah. The extension of the Azorah. We're soon going to learn that the, that the Chachomim had the ability, excuse me, of extending the Azorah, extending the sanctity of the Azorah further than the original boundaries. Likewise, they were able to extend the Harabayas. Likewise, they were able to extend the Yerushalayim. They had the ability, as we'll soon see what the process was. So anybody who goes into the Azorah or to the extensions of the Azorah um, is going to be over on the Isser and is going to be Chayyid. Now, how do you extend the city? One cannot extend the city or the Azores, Ella, unless you have four items. Ella Bemelech, number one with the king, Novi, Urivitumim, and Sanhedrin Shalshivim Ve'echel. You have to have four items in order to be able to sanctify an area in Yerushalayim or an area in the Azores to extend the Azores. Then the, then the Mishnah says it was also a process. And you also have to have shtei toidos, two carbonous toidos, ubeshir and with song, ubezid mahalchin and a bezin. That's that. There's a whole, there's a whole procession, a whole parade. I'll skip that. And then the last line, v'chol shaloi nasis b'chol elu. If you do not have this process, these four items of a melech navi urevetumim sanhedrin, hanichnas l'sham ein chayvalel. That means if somebody goes into an area that was extended. But it didn't have all the four items, it's not considered holy. Now, the Gemara brings a machlekas. Do you have to have all four or any one of the four? Now, the simple reading of the Mishnah suggests you have to have all four. But the Gemara has apparently another girsa, another version in the Mishnah, um, which, according to that reading, if you have one of the four, it's also good. So the Gemara, two pages later, this is quote Zion. The Gemara says like this: Itmar, the fifth, the, the sixth word, Itmar. It was said. It was discussed in the Beis Hamedrash. Rav Huna Amar, Rav Huna said, "Bechol Eilu." You have to have all four items. If you're missing one, you don't have the power to extend or, in general, to sanctify the Beis Hamikdash. Rav Nachman Amar, apparently his girsa, his version was different. Ba'achas Mikol Eilu. Any one of these four items is okay. What's the difference? Who cares? I mean, the base of Mignus was sanctified by Shleimah HaMelech, and he had all four items. So who cares whether you have to have all four or not? He sanctified it. Says the Gemara, obviously they're arguing whether the Kedusha of Shleimah HaMelech extends further. That means once the base of Mignus was destroyed, maybe what he accomplished was undone. And that's the argument. Because again, if, if, Shleimah HaMelech's Kedusha is, 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 is everlasting, then who cares? Obviously, it's holy. Unless you're going to argue that the, that the Gemara is discussing about the extensions. But we know if there were extensions or not. So says the Gemara, the argument is whether the Shleimah HaMelech's Kedusha is everlasting or not. Rav Huna Amar, Rav Huna says, Bechol Elutnan, Kosovar, because he holds, Kedusha Rishayna, the initial Kedusha that was made by Shleimah HaMelech, Kitsha Lishaita, it's a very important line to know, that's why I, I bolded it. Kitsha Lishaita, he made it holy for the time when he made it, when he sanctified it. The Kitsha Laosid Lavi, and he also sanctified it forever. That means it was a Kedusha that was everlasting. Now, Ezra, we know, came back from Bovel together with 40 some thousand Jews after the Jews were invited back there to show by Kedush. And he wanted to build the Beis Amikdosh. So the story goes that Ezra actually enacted this whole, I mean, he actually did this whole process. Now, Ezra, there was no Melech in those days, we know, right? After the, the destruction of the, of the Beis Amikdosh, there was no kingdom anymore. 
Novi is debatable. Sanhedrin, they probably had. Urim Batumim, they didn't have, as we know. So when Ezra did that act, he didn't have all those four things. So the Gemara says, what did Ezra do? Says the Gemara, the Ezra Zecher Ba'amahudov. When he came back to Eretz Yisrael and he made this whole thing, he was just doing a show. He was doing a Zecher. He was reminding us how the process of sanctifying the Beis Hamikdash looks like, but he wasn't actually sanctifying it. He was relying on the sanctity of Shlomo Hamelach. If Nachman Omar, if Nachman who holds the Achas Mikol Elutnan, that any if you have even one of these four items, or a Melach, or a Novi, or a Sanhedrin, or Urim Betumim, if you have any one of these, it's okay. He holds. Kosovar kedushar yishayno kicho l'shaito when Shleima Hamelach sanctified it. He sanctified it for the time being, as long as the walls are standing. V'loy kicho l'azir love. As soon as the walls fall down, as soon as the Beis is destroyed, Shleima Hamelach's kedusha um, expires. The Ezra kedushi kodesh and that uh, event, that ceremony that Ezra did, that Ezra made, was actually to sanctify the Beis Hamikdash. Even though there was no room between. Now, the logic would continue that Ezra's Kedusha also has an expiration date. So we have over here a machlek between Rav Huna and Rav Nachman whether the Kedusha of the Vesamikdash is intrinsic, is everlasting, once it was done once by Shleim HaMelech, it's there to stay, or it has an expiration date. As long as the walls are standing good, the walls fall apart, the walls are broken, they're breached. The kedusha, the kedusha expires, and it's a very big, obvious relevance to us. If you follow the Huna's position, then whatever we spoke about before applies. You can, we cannot go into the Harabais because it has that kedusha, that holiness, and those those dinim that apply to you to Shalayim and to the Harabais and to the Azorah apply to us today. If you hold like Rav Nachman, then there is no kedusha. There is no sanctity on the level of Mikdash Hashem that we have to be careful about. Now, maybe we have to be careful because it's, it's a special place. It has relevance to us. It has, it has importance to us. But it's not holy. It doesn't have that Kedusha. So how do we pass it? So how do we rule? So to make halacha exciting, there's obviously a machlekes. So we have over here a machleke between the Rambam and the Raivet. But let's just learn We'll, we'll be a little patient. We'll go through the Rambam, and we'll just see how the Rambam develops the halacha. So this is actually from Hilchus Beis Abchira. We already learned one halacha from Hilchus Beis Abchira. The Rebbe instructed us to learn Hilchus Beis Abchira. So I think the Rebbe meant all eight chapters of Hilchus Beis Abchira. Many, many of us get excited the first one, the second one, the third one, and then we it peters out. So I'm starting from the end, so we can start off from the ones that we don't always learn. So this is Perek Vav, chapter six, halacha yud. Says the Rambam, Bezdin Shirotu Lo Hisval Rishalayim. If a Bezdin wanted to extend the city of Rishalayim, or Lo Hisval Lo Azara Mosif, and they have the permission to do so. Let's go on to Allah Yud Aleph. They can do it as, as long as they want. It says actually when, when Mashiach will come, Rishalayim will be extended further, right? There'll be, there'll be a horse that's going to run, and as, as long as the horse is running, that's how, we, that's how, that's how far Rishalayim is going to extend. Allah Yud Aleph. Ain Mosif in Allah Yud. We don't extend the city, Oya Lo Azaris Elo. Like it says, the first one who sanctified a temple was Moshe Rabbeinu. As I show you, Moshe Rabbeinu was a king, he was a Sanhedrin, he was a Novi, he was Urim Betumim. So you have to have, according to the Rambam, all four. Why the Rambam only emphasizes the Melech part? We can debate it, we can discuss it. I don't want to get caught up with that. And then I'm going to discuss Halakha Yudbeis. In the interest of time, I'm going to skip it, but it's, it's an interesting read. Uh, the Ram discusses the process and the ceremony, what they did when they, extend, when they, when they extended um, the Azorah or Yerushalayim. Halakha Yudalim. Kol Mokon, any place, Shaloi Nasa Bechol Elu, Vichaseider Haza, Ein Kodesh Gomor. It's not completely holy, which means it doesn't have the sanctity of the Mikdash. The Zesha also Ezra, state Toydas, and this and Ezra made that ceremony with two uh, Toydas sacrifices. Zikara in Husha also. But like the Mice of Niskadesh and not with his actions, was Yerushalayim holy. There was a Sanhedrin, and there were Nevi'im still. There was Nehemiah, there was... Um, as it himself could have been a Novi, 
There were others. There were Nevi'im around. So what made Yerushalayim holy? How did Ezra have the ability of being makir korbonis? So the Rambam clearly rules that Yerushalayim, Beis HaMikdash, the Azara is with the sanctity of Shleim HaMelech and it has no expiration date. Because you need all those four things and if Ezra didn't have them, how could we have had a second temple? Obviously, we were relying, we were still building upon the foundations of Shleim HaMelech and therefore till today, the sanctity is there. That, and I'm continuing halacha tazvav, a very important halacha. Look, ficha makrivim hakarbonis kulam. One is permitted to be makriv to sacrifice any carbon. Alva pisha ancient by his bonnet, even though there is no actual structure of the base of mingdash. Obviously, you have to know where the where the mizbeach, where the mokum hamizbeach is. Obviously, you have to be pure. There are many conditions, but as far as the sanctity of the base of mingdash, it's there. The place is there. The walls don't make the sanctity. You can eat the kachik kadoshim b'cholo azara. Afal pishehi charev of eina mukefes b'mechitza. Even though there's no wall, v'oichlin kachim kalim. You can eat kachim kalim in Yerushalayim. Umayis sheni b'chol Yerushalayim. Afal pishe ain't shom Even though the walls may have fallen. Shachidusha lishayna kichol l'shaito v'kichol l'asid lava. So according to the Rambam, today the halachas of the sanctity of the Beis Hamikdash apply 100%. And technically, if we were able to eat Meister Shemi, we would eat it in Yerushalayim. Technically, if we were able to be Makar of Karbonas, based on we know where the Mizbeach is, we can go ahead and do so. In fact, we know after Yerushalayim was um, conquered by the Israelis, so the Rebbe joined many other Rabbanim who started discussing, since now we have the ability to go to Yerushalayim, and we have the ability to go into the Harabayas, so technically we have the obligation of sacrificing the Korban Pesach. And the Rebbe therefore instructed for numerous years, um, starting from Tavshin Chavches, 1968, um, which was the year following the Six Day War, and 1970 the Rebbe again encouraged, and the Rebbe even had arguments with various Rabban and Rabbi Zev, and the Rebbe had lengthy uh, discussions with him via, via letters, the Rebbe's position was that since, according to some opinion, like the Rambam and Rabbi Chilme Paris, the Rebbe quoted, that you're able to be makrib korbanis nowadays, including the carbon Pesach. Again, there are some technical things that, that don't allow us to do it, obviously. We're Tomei, etc., etc. The Rebbe's position was, therefore, one should not be in the Yerushalayim area at a Pesach. Go out. Imagine the husband said to go out of the house at a Pesach while, while, while the wives are busy until, until, at a, until uh, right before Pesach starts. You have to be out of the house from Chatzais. Including on Pesach Sheini, you have to be out of the house. The Rebbe was a very strong position. The Rebbe ultimately nullified his position because the Rebbe felt that the Yidden aren't serious about it, and we don't really have control about it. And they were right away discussing about giving it back. The Rebbe said it's not; it's not really in our hands, and therefore that halacha doesn't really apply. The Rebbe went back on on, on, on his um, on his position about that. But this is all based on the Rebbe. Let's see now the opposing opinion, the Daivet. So that's. that's Tess, that's your next uh, quote over there. Aleph, Aleph stands for Omar Avrom, the David's first name, Avrom. Svaras atzmai hizu. This that the Rambam writes that the Beis HaMikdosh is still holy with the holiness of Shleimah HaMelech, it's his own opinion. I don't know where he gets this. And all the Mepharshim ask him that I what do you mean you don't know where he gets this from? It's a Gemara in Shavuos, the Buna's position. You don't have to agree with the Rambam, but don't say you don't know where he gets it from. I'll soon show you in, 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 uh, in, in Yud, there's a Mishnah about it. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an actual discussion that, that nowadays you can be Makar Korbanas after the Temple's destruction. So they ask him, I even why he's saying such, such an expression. But that was an Ivan's position. The Rambam was getting, the Rambam doesn't have a source for this. In fact, he says, if you look at Mishnayis, so the common Mukhaim, especially in Maiser Shani, Mishnayis and Maiser Shani, the Mishnayis says, there is a Mikdash, there's no Mikdash, Yirka, the Maiser Shani needs to rot. Why should it rot? Go ahead and eat it. Right? Well, the Gemara of the Gemara of the says the Nafal Mechitz is the Gemara is discussing there about, about exchanging my Sushani in certain circumstances. The Gemara has a whole discussion. The Gemara says, we're talking about a case where the wall fell, at, the, the, the my Sushani went into the city and then the walls fell, so then therefore you're, 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 you're exempt from, from, uh, from eating it. That was the case. Clearly, the Gemara is understanding that as soon as the walls collapse, as soon as the, the, the walls fall, the sanctity falls. So how could the Ramam 
hold that um, that, that, that the kedusha is still there. Alma leman da amak kedusha yishayin alei kichal aslev. We see from this from, from these gemaras and from these mishnayos that the ones who hold kedusha yishayin alei kichal aslev is talking about beis hamikdash and talking about yerushalayim and talking about the entire area. So that's it. The kedusha expired once the yidden left. Once the Goyim took over. I'll, I'll skip a few lines because these are the confusing lines in, in the Ivid, uh, and it gets into a whole other discussion, which I do want to get to if we have time. But for now, I want to, I want to focus on this part. Um, now, says, says the Ivid that there is a position that, and that's how, by the way, the Ramah himself holds, that Eretz Yisrael actually did have an expiration date. When Nebuchadnezzar came and chased the Yidin out of Eretz Yisrael, Eretz Yisrael lost its sanctity. For those 70 years, Eretz Yisrael had lost its sanctity. When the Yidin came back and they resettled Eretz Yisrael, so those areas that the Yidin settled regained back its sanctity. And the Rambam position is the same. So the Rambam differentiates between Yerushalayim versus Eretz Yisrael. And we'll soon see why. But the, but the, but the Ravid explains it like this. The Ravid explains, Avol Yerushalayim ula mikdosh you know what? Let's actually learn those lines. Even according to the BAC that says that once Ezra came back, he reinstituted the Kedusha back in Eretz Yisrael, and he instituted the Kedusha back. He was only referring to Eretz Yisrael, but not to Yerushalayim. Even the position that says that Ezra brought back the sanctity and it was forever, that was only with regards to Eretz Yisrael. Why? With these Shahoya Yedea Ezra, because Ezra knew the Nevoa, Shahamikdosh of Yerushalayim Asidim Lishtan, that ultimately Yerushalayim is going to be destroyed and it's going to change. Uli Hiskadish Kiddush Acher Eilomi, and it's going to have another sanctity, which that sanctity will be everlasting when Mashiach will come. The Chvayd Hashem with the glory of Hashem. Lo'elam forever. And therefore, Ezra like, never put all the holiness in, 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 in Yerushalayim. He only had, he said, as long as they're here, the sanctity is going to be here. If not, it's going to go away, which is an interesting position of the Ravid to say as if Ezra has the ability to decide if the Gdusha lasts or not. It's like as if he, made a, he makes a condition. But it's an interesting position of the Ravid. And the Ravid said, how do I know all of this? Kach nigvali misoyd Hashem lideo. And therefore, he concludes, anybody who goes into the Beisam Mikdash nowadays, there's no colors, there's no problem. So the Ravid's position is different than the Nambams. The Kedusha of Eretz Yisrael that was given, that was reinstituted through, uh, by, by Shleim HaMelech, according to the Ravid, is everlasting, according to the Ravid, is not. And therefore, once the walls fell, the Kedusha went. Ezra reinstituted it, but as far as the Beisam Mikdash was concerned, it was an expiration date. Um, so, just to bring a few other, a few back, uh, 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 just to explain the Rambam's position a little bit, because that, that, that I did have some question that I did I want, on the Rambam. I want to show you a Mishnah in Idias, which we know that the Masech the Idias has a very, very strong Mishnayas that are brought in a in Masechus Idias have a certain strength to them. Because Idias means testimonies, things that were accepted by testimony, this is the final ruling. So it's an interesting Mishnah. The Mishnah says, I'll start from Rabbi Yeshua. Some, the Gemara discusses if Rabbi Eliezer, the first position, is arguing with Rabbi Yeshua or not. The conclusion in numerous Gemaras, including Shavuos and Megillah and Sanhedrin, that there's no machleks between Rabbi Eliezer and Rabbi Yeshua. Therefore, I'm going to learn from Rabbi Yeshua and learn it as if that's a position that everybody agrees with. Shamati, I heard from my teachers. Shemakrivim apal pisha ain bias. One may offer a sacrifice even though there's no base on the kiddush. The oichlin kachik kadoshim apal pisha ain kloim. You can eat kachik kadoshim even though there's no wall around the base on the kiddush. Kachim kalim amaisha sheni apal pisha ain kloim. Even though the walls of Yerushalayim fell. She kiddusha yisheno kichol l'shaito v'kichol l'osim l'osim. Because the kiddusha of Shleim Ha'amelech, kiddusha yisheno is everlasting. That's probably the Rambam's real. Uh, foundation for his ruling. 
If this is an undis- indisputable Mishnah, there's one ruling, there's one opinion, and the Gemara numerous times says that even Rebbe doesn't argue with that. What about the Meister Shani business? I had said, hey, the Gemara says that if the walls aren't there, you can't eat it. But if you have Meister Shani, you let it rot. So actually, the Rambam has a position about that as well. So if you look at the Rambam, Hilchus Meister Shani, Veneta Revoi, Chapter 2, Aloha Aleph, the Rambam writes, Meister Shani needs to be eaten by its owners, Lufnim Yuchem Yerushalayim, inside of the wall of Yerushalayim. And he brings the verse. Next line. The Noyeg and Maiser Shani technically is Noyeg, Bifnea Bais, Bishalei Bifnea Bais, consistent with the Rambam's Shita. Aval Eimi Necho Bishalayim, there's a little issue. You can't eat it in Yerushalayim because of another problem. Ela Bifnea Bais, not because the sanctity is not there. Shinema, because it's learned out of a verse. It says in the Torah, Masar de Gomcha, the tithe of your grain, Tiroischa of your wine of your grapes the yitzarecha and your oil and your and your and your um and your olives and the bechayr of your cattle so the gemara learns that bechayr is connected with meiser okay bechayr is a carbon we know we can't bring carbonas today because we don't have a mizbeach we don't know where the mizbeach is so there's a technical problem we can't be mocking the carbon the the the, the bechayr since we cannot give the Bechayr as a sacrifice, likewise, likewise, we don't, we don't do Maiser either. says, this is the Gemara said that the Maiser Shaini rot. It's not because there's no sanctity in Yerushalayim. It's because of a technical thing. The Maiser Shaini and Bechayr have the same ruling. So if you can't have Bechor, you can't have Maish Hashani. But the Kedusha is there. In fact, if you look at Shulchan Aruch in the Tur, the Tur actually writes the very, very long paragraph in the Tur, Shin Lamed Aleph, Yeridea. He writes, I don't want to get into the details, but I'm just going to go through the basic ideas of Maiser and, and, and Trumo and, and, and some, you know, just the basic knowledge of what it is. So, then, so the Tur writes, After you do Trumo, after... Um, after you do Bikur uh, um, and um, Trum, he goes through the whole order of what you have to do first. Then he says, you give a tenth of what you have left. According to Halacha, it would have been, a, we, we, we are able to, it's fitting to eat, to eat in Yerushalayim. The Kedusha of the ear and the Ba'is did not are not, uh, didn't, didn't, uh, are nullified. Eloshi, Yavshel Eich, like Kivan Sheim is Beach, because no Mizbeach, the Iskis no Bechir, because we compare it to a Bechir. Ma Bechir, just like a Bechir, you have to have a Reisam Nikdosh because of the carbon aspect of it. So do Maise. So we have a ruling from the Tur. In fact, the Mug in Avram, which is on, the, on your other handout, I, I didn't uh, copy the actual Mug in Avram, but I'm going to show you um, in the Min Yitzchok, by the way, in the responses in the Chuvas, you're not going to find much about this because it wasn't relevant until about 50 years ago, like a practical halacha. So you find it all in the Rishayim, discussing the modus, but as a real halachic shaylin, it only came up 60, uh, 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 50 years ago. So then the Rabbanim of Yerushalayim were busy dealing with it a lot. So you have a lot of Chuvas from Min Yitzchok, who was the Dayan of the Eid al Um he wrote an invaluable volume of uh, 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 responses that are used by every Rav these days, and also Tzitz Eliezer. But if you look in, in, in your second handout, um, on page two, number seven, so I underlined over there, he says that with regards to Halacha Lemaisa, I'm not going to get involved in the discussion because it's a machleik is an amram and the David. But as far as halacha lemaisa is concerned, he writes, "Shikvar kasev amogen avram v'sim and tov kuf samach alav sev katan beis." The divrei haram. This is a quote from the Magen Avram. Divrei haram bam shiridim v'kayom. And the words of the Rambam are strong, are are true. V'hanichnas ata lemokim amikdash chayiv kares shikolonu tmei mesim. Anybody goes with amikdash nowadays, if you are a tmei mes and you go all the way to the azora, you chayiv kares. And again. If we didn't go to the mikvah properly for our other tumas, we can't go to the Harabais either. So it's a psag din of the Mogan Um I want to just show you, since there's so much to talk about over here, um, I want to just show you um, 
two two responses. One from Harav Cook, who was the first one of the first Abonim in Eretz Yisrael in the uh, early 1900s. He had a, re- a relationship with, with the Friedrich Kareva. And he has a sefer called Mishpat Koyin. He was a Koyin. And he had a sefer discussing the laws of Eretz Yisrael. And he has a chapter, Tzadik Vov, uh, uh, um, on the Kedushas Mokim Hamikdush nowadays. So he writes that it's a scary thing to get involved in this discussion. I mean, is somebody really going to say it's okay to walk up? It's a question of Kodesh. He says you got to be very careful about how to pass in this thing. He says, very careful. Uh, we'll just read a few lines over here. In the second column, on the, on the bottom, It's not our business to, 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 to decide between these great mountains, especially between the Raivin and the Nambam, whether the Gdusha and the and Shnia, which is it everlasting or not. He says, if you're, if you're a Rav and you know there's a Suffolk and there's no real Rav that Paskin clearly one way or the other about an issue of Kodesh, for sure you're going to be Machmer. You're going to decide otherwise. But then he writes something very interesting. On the last column over there, this is what I want to bring out. He writes, if you notice the language of the Raivet even, forget the Rambam, the Rambam for sure says it's a problem, but even the Raivet, how did he finish off his sentence, his whole paragraph against the Rambam? What did he say? He says, therefore, somebody who goes now to the Harabayas, to the Mesa Migdos, He's not Chayim Kores. Why doesn't he just write, therefore it's okay to go up? He writes, Eimei Kores. In other words, he says, even the Raivin would agree it's usher to go up. He just says, since the sanctity halachically is not there, so therefore it's not called Mikdash Hashem. Therefore there's no Kores. But you can't go up. And I'll soon show you maybe a reasoning why. Like, what, what, what would be the Raivin's reason why you can't go up? But he says, Eimei Kores is a very interesting language. The Raivin chose his words, I'm sure, carefully. And the same idea is written by the Bnei, by, by Bing and Sin, which is the one who wrote the Aruch Laneir, by Etlinger. Um, so I'm not going to go through the whole thing. He says that Ivan chooses his words, aimed by Kodesh, very specific, on page 3, uh, 9. Um, I, I, I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but he said maybe that Ivan wants to emphasize that according to the Rambam, somebody who goes up to the Harabayas knowingly, or to the Azorah knowingly, is Posel Eidus, because he's Chayib Kodesh. Somebody who's Chayib Kodesh is Posel Eidus. The Ivan wants to tell you it's also to go up, but you're not going to be Posel Eidus because there's room to be Mako. It's not, but it's for sure also, for sure shouldn't be done. He argues, he, he argues the same idea as the as, as Rav Kook. But what is, what could be a reason why it would be also to go up even according to the Ivan? So there's a rule that I've said many, many times by Fabregas, even look at the Sikhs, it's brought down a few times, that the Ivan was not shy to argue with the Rambam. And when he didn't argue, it's because he probably agreed with the Rambam. Only when he argues, that's when he dis- that's when he differs. So if you look back in your first handouts, um, uh, quote, where are we? Quote Yudches, which is the end. P- pretty much, the, pretty much the, the second to last. This is also a milk base of a chiro, peleg zayin and lochet zayin. The Rambam here discusses. About um, that, even nowadays, if we don't have a base on Mikdosh, and if that was destroyed, the, the way we have to respect it has to be equal to the way we did in the times of the base on Mikdosh. As he behaved when it was up. That I'm not discussing here as far as the Kedusha, just the COVID. And in fact, Perek Zayin, the Pilk of Beis is about honoring, Meiro, and giving cover to the Beis HaMikdash because of its position, because it has, it, it, it has a Shekhinah there. So therefore, a person has to, shouldn't go in, one may not sit in the Azorah, one should not act uh, silly and, 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 and lightheaded in, towards the East Gate. We compare Shabbos to Mikdash. Mashmira Shabbos lo Elam has no expiration date. Shabbos is a mitzvah that was given to us in Mora, and we and it's still today the exact same Shabbos. Af Meira Mikdash lo Elam. Sha Af Apishachar Lo and behold, there's no rivet arguing against this. 
So Rav Kook and, and many others want to argue that the David is only arguing as far as the Kodesh aspect. As far as is, our, is there Kodesh? No. But the Meira HaMikdash, the fear of the Mikdash, the behavior towards the Mikdash has to be with the absolute Kedusha, with the absolute, uh, um, um, you know, with the absolute Adarach uh, um, And therefore, the argument is that the David doesn't disagree with the Ramah, but one shouldn't go there. You're asking, is Chayyab Kodesh? He's not Chayyab Kodesh. There's only one Rav that I think very, very clearly holds that we pass him like the Rambam, like the Raivet. Now was Rav Goren, which was a chief rabbi in, of the army, later on and chief rabbi of, of Israel. Um, we can go into it in detail, but, but his argument is that we pass him like the Raivet, and he has a reason behind it. He says, the Me'iri, which is on your second handout, page one, two. I'm just gonna to read to you two lines. And we can go on and on. It's, 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 a, really, it's a really interesting discussion. Um, I'm just touching the surface of it. The Me'iri writes, the Hamilic posture, the, 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 the Me'iri side with the Raivet, okay? And the Me'iri quotes the Raivet that if you go there, there's no Kodesh. Then the Me'iri adds a few words. He writes, the Hamilic it's, uh, it, 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 it's an accepted meaning, to go into the Makam HaMikdash, based on what I heard. So the so that Gordon argues and says the Me'ini is not just saying that he passed like the Raivet, he's saying I have testimony that people went out. That was the accepted behavior in, in Yiddish life. And on this line, he goes and says, you can go up. Obviously you have to go up with the Rechadas, obviously you have to go up with COVID and, and you know, behave accordingly. And he says, the, the Raivet believes that the place is intrinsically holy, but it's not halachically holy. I mean, yes, we have the Abish who chose the Makam Hamikdos from way back when, when he created the world. He chose, uh, he, he created other Marishan, as, as, as Rambam writes halachically, he created other Marishan from the earth of the, of the place of the Mizbeach, right? Adam Mimakam Kaparos in Ibra. So for sure he agrees that there's sanctity in it intrinsically, but halachically, no. And that's why the Me'iri said people would go up. So there's a whole discussion whether we could rely on the Me'iri's, you know, what he heard, the Me'iri didn't live in Eretz Yisrael. The Me'iri was very far away from Eretz Yisrael. And the Achreinim deal with this extensively, and they say, it, it, halachically, one cannot rely on the Me'iri's Shemua. But, but, but I'm, I'm going to end with this, because we can go on. I'm going to end with this and one more point, just because I want to uh, share with you the Rebbe's position about this. At least what the Rebbe, once, what, what, what the Rebbe wrote once. If you look on page 2, uh, 5, number 5, I quoted to you from a Sefer Kafter Valfarach. He was a Yid, a Rishon, who moved to Eretz He loved Eretz His name was uh, Eshtoyri Haparchi. That um, was his name. Abeinu Eshtoyri Haparchi. And he loved Eretz His And he wrote a Sefer. He went, he, he, he actually he actually stayed. He traveled to Eretz He says, he says, I went out to Eretz so I went to go... I, he checked out the plans and the place. He wanted to really get to understand all the psukim and how it applies to the actual Eretz Yisrael. And he writes extensively about Eretz Yisrael and the borders of Yerushalayim and the borders of the Harabais and the Azora. He writes a lot about it. A lot of the foundations of the borders of the Azora and the, and the Harabais is based on, what he, on, on, on his testimony. He writes like this. Im came hayoyin shanachnu b'chato einu. We are now suffering our sins. Mi b'chutz nuchalei hiskarev l'ni in tefillah. Outside of the harabayas, we can go. Bi hishtachavoya ad oisom haksolim. I'm just quoting a little piece of it, but he, he discusses the, the ksolim that he's referring to is the ksolim of the harabayas, which means the koisal amarovi, that, that, that wall. The chayin amod the baron. He lived in Eretz Yisrael. He lived in Eretz Yisrael. Yes, true, he was in the 14th century, about the same time, maybe a little, a little, a little after, maybe the um, the Me'iri. The Chein Amad the Bar, Boim Ad Oisam Aksolim Umispalim Okelis Barach Lifnei Elo Hasorim Shei Iskarno. And ah, you're gonna ask, what's the point? Like, why is it more holy than anywhere else? Ukfar Kbi Ukfar Bikesh Me Okelis Barach Shleima B'Tfilas Shi Tukubal Tfilas Hamokim Ahu. That area should be have a have a have an ability that the Tfilas should go up. That's why we all daven toward Yerushalayim. Tefillahs should go up through Yerushalayim. Tel Piyos, Tal Piyos, uh, a mound that all the mouths turn towards. So the Minchas Yitzchak and, and, and others, they bring down, if you look in, 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 in 6, 
he writes, How can you compare the, the, the Me'iri Shmua, what he heard from others, to somebody who actually lived in, in Eretz Yisrael at that time? But a guy in Amir, if you look in six down the line there, Shoya Rachik Mir Shalayim, because like a Pia Shmu, he only wrote it based on what he heard. Ukimafur is a God of it. He himself writes only a Shmu. Ulu Umazet, and conversely, as long as Edus Neir, Habal Kafdu Bafelach, as a Hoya Gamkim Bismana, who he lived at that time apparently. For Hoya Mir Shalayim, the Hey, the Amad the Bar, love it, Rak, Adak Solom, Lee Spal, the Loymeak Solom of the so you compare an uh, Eidos someone who actually was there and witnessed what's going on, versus the Me'iri. Others argue also the Me'iri. Who said there was a Rav in Yerushalayim in those times that was an established rabbinic that would stop people from going up? Could be it was just one big, you know, chaotic area. Chaotic, uh, it wasn't, there was no organized, you know, a rabbinate. So could be, there was no Rav that would tell people, don't go past this place, I don't know. So many I argue that you can't rely on the Me'iri and Paskin the Din based on those three, four words that I heard that people would go up there. And... For all practical purposes, basically every rov, and, I, and, and you have in your handout in the last page there, I showed you some, some of the signs that would go up, that, that went up in, in, in different kufas, one from Rav Kuk, one from, uh, from the current rabbinate in, in Yerushalayim. It, it, it's an obvious thing, no one should go up. It's a dangerous thing to go up. You're, 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 you're playing with fire. And besides, we don't even know where exactly the Harabai is, I mean, where the Azorah is. So for all we know, the Azorah is extended somewhere else. Do you know that the Radvaz, and I, and I quoted over here, hold at the, the wall of the Kais al that is the wall of the Beis Amigas. That means technically you're in the Azara. The reason why we don't take the Advas too seriously is because he himself contradicts himself in, in two places, and most agree that the, that the place of the, of the of, and we have pretty clear evidence, the place of the, of the, of the, of the Kais al is definitely on outside of the Arabias. But to argue that just you can walk in without really, really having concrete evidence and proof where the, where the Azara is, where the Harabayas is, without taking the precautions is very dangerous. The Rebbe writes, um, it's actually a Ksavyad. So it's not, it's not, it's not, I'm not taking it from a, it's actually a Ksavyad um, that recently, um, when, 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 when I put this here together a few years ago, at the time it was only printed in Shulchan Menachem, but, re, but, but recently uh, I saw the actual Ksavyad. I think the Rebbe wrote this to Harav Getz, who was the Rebbe of the Kaisal at the time. And he wrote in page 3, 10. In the second handout, page 3, 10. He writes over there, the Rebbe writes like this. The Rav was asking the Rebbe, do you think we should bring up the discussion of this issue of going up to the Harabayas? The Rebbe says, Poshut. Asher b'matzav hanoichachi v'chol k'yayitzibaz in this current situation, in any similar discussion, something which has an hanimshach asiris v'shon, something which is, which carries, which carried on for decades, the kivun echod in one direction, in the positive direction, miyamin, which is eis dos lomi, the teira direction, and then you want to bring the, bring the, steer the discussion with smell to the left, I'm obviously shehinni b'chol atayikif neged ha'alah. I'll say that him to bring up as a discussion on your, I guess your readings, or to bring up as a as a discussion. Hetero ali al harabayis. The the notion maybe you'll be allowed to go up to harabayis because kitekif from yad lahaschola tashak levatari. As soon as you start debating this, yad lachmonu lislan b'shom akama v'kama. People are going to hear. Oh, I heard it's a debate. I heard maybe yes, maybe maybe. People are going to start going up. Well, the Kaimis and perhaps the places she is that that that, 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 the pro, that the prohibition of going there is absolute. There's no debate about it. Um, Umispotim and their numbers yelech v'yigdal, almost prophetic words. You can't you're not going to stop once the movement the, you know, the movement starts, the movement continues and it grows. And then once you're going to warn them to stop, it's only going to get them more excited. To not, not, now we for sure have to do it. So chol has hadibs and any warning if they'll ever come. But you know, yelabu hayis. You're only going to get people more and more excited. Do you see from mispar and they're going to increase the people that are going to go. The chol mishiyasa b'zeh upshita ha'elu b'poil. Anybody who discusses this or anybody who actually goes up yode b'mal ali is going out. His hand actually is on the desecrating end. His hand is on the is it, it, it's not in the right position. Um, that that was the right position, and, and it's true because once you start discussing it as if it's a, it's maybe, maybe you should, maybe you shouldn't. That's it. People hear half words, you know. They they they, they take the maybe yes, and they, they start going up, and it becomes a movement, and it's dangerous. So, in in summation, I think it's pretty clear that even if you don't agree with the Rambam, which the majority of opinions say we probably should agree with the Rambam, and actually I, I'm not gonna go this now, but in your hand that you have on. Um, uh, ha- quote quote um, Yudal that brought 
five Rishonim who say almost verbatim what the Rambam writes, that the Kedusha of Yerushalayim and the Bishamikdos was the Kedusha of Shleim HaMelech. And that seems to be the accepted opinion amongst the Rishonim and amongst the Paiskim of our generation. It be our Hashem's will that you wrote in that very, very soon. This debate should be irrelevant. We should all be able to go up to Harabayas, Yimakrav Kravonis, and uh, this discussion should be of the past. Amen. Amen. Amen.